Yo, yo, listen up. About to get real. I'm here to tell you a story. One that still haunts me to this day. I once crossed a man up so hard. He had compound fractures on both of his femur bones. When a little something like this. Back in 2009. We were looking fly, walking with the boys now We were the hip-hop hottest in the neighborhood Just a typical day, we all were bothered Walking up to our usual spot Some guy had the audacity To stand it like he owned the place He told me, I could beat you in a second now I was born for this Gotta keep calm, I was born for this I was born for this Little does he know, I was born for this Yeah Holy flip, I flip and missed it Think to myself, play it off like a fire Now this guy claims he crossed me out my shoe You didn't make me fall, I meant to Ugh, The time it come to make him look dumb I had enough, I'd had enough You know what time it is, yeah Hit him with the heart, yeah. heart. It ain't a double, it ain't a triple It's the mega monster quadruple I was born for this Gotta keep calm, I was born for this Sit back I was born for this Gotta keep calm, I was born for this Hey, how's it going? Parker Welbeck here with FullTimeFilmmaker.com and today Landon and I are going to be showing you our top 10 favorite unique gimbal movements. In this video though, we're not going to be going over how to balance your camera, exact motor settings we use, tips for getting smooth shots, or any of the basic camera movements. That can all be found inside the full course, but in this video we're going to be focusing on some unique moves or how to combine multiple basic moves into more advanced moves. All the clips that you just saw from that intro sequence were shot using the DJI Ronin S and 1DX Mark II, and because as many you know I'm more of a glide cam man. Landon, who is a Ronin S man, was our cameraman on this shoot and will be helping me explain how we achieved each of these shots. So Landon, go ahead and start us off. All right, the first gimbal movement that we used in this video is called the fly through. Now this one is exactly what it sounds like. The movement itself is just a basic push in or pull out, but with the added element of passing through an object. Now this movement looks best with a wider focal length, so we used a 12 millimeter wide angle lens. Now with this 1DX and Ronin S setup, we'll obviously need to use an object with a large enough opening that we can pass through fairly easily, so we decided to use a car window, but the smaller your setup, the more creative you can get with passing through smaller openings. And as far as technique goes, again, pretty basic push and move, just make sure to throw it into flashlight mode so it's completely horizontal with the ground. The second move we did is called the tilt slash pan slash parallax. This movement is exactly what it sounds like, just combining two basic moves into one. We tilted down and panned the camera at the same time, as well as walked in the opposite direction of the pan simultaneously. I think this move works particularly well when you're filming a structure of some kind, so I usually like to use this with real estate videos or at a concert when showing off the entire stage. For this move, you'll want the pan and tilt on your gimbal to be activated, and I recommend lowering the strength of your motor settings as well so it's less robotic looking and flows more smoothly. And the key with this shot is twisting your wrist while also tipping your gimbal forward and doing them both at the same speed while also walking in the opposite direction of your pan. This will usually take a few takes to get all those elements moving at the same speed, but if your gimbal motors are adjusted and you're doing the movement slowly, it should be pretty easy. All right, the third move we pulled off is called the 3D orbit. Now this move is basically a parallax, but instead of doing it with the gimbal vertically, we do it with the gimbal horizontally. And it only works when there's empty space all around your subject. For example, Parker sitting on a ledge with his feet dangling off. Now if we make their feet the subject of this clip, we have all this open air around it where we can maneuver the gimbal. Now we call this the 3D orbit because it's kind of like the solar system where our dominant subject is the sun and our camera is like a planet orbiting the sun. So the gimbal movement that we're gonna be making is essentially one big circle that maintains the same distance while the camera is always pointed at the subject. Now for this one, we also use the 12 millimeter lens so that we could be close to our subject and still get all of it in the frame. And the way that we program our gimbal to make this movement is by putting it in 3D roll 360, FPV or POV mode, depending on your gimbal. Now I usually turn the motor sensitivity down a bit so there's no sudden jerks while I'm making the 
the movement. Now the hardest part is placing your hands in a way that allows you to rotate the gimbal without losing your grip or having to turn your entire body. Now obviously this will take a few takes to make that perfect rotation and keep an equal distance away from your subject while keeping it in the center of the frame the whole time. Moving on now to our fourth move is called the jib. For this one we are basically imitating the movement of a jib or a crane. So the camera moves from a higher somewhat bird eye view to a normal eye level. To make this one work you're going to need a strong extension pole that you can screw in between the grip and the tripod. We got a $20 version off of Amazon, link in the description. And for gimbal settings, we kept the pan axis activated. That way we could pan while bringing the camera down. And like with most of these movements, this one works best when you have some kind of foreground to work with to help sell the fact that you're moving from a higher to a lower location. So we started the gimbal up high in the trees and slowly brought the camera down to eye level while walking backwards and panning just slightly. Now the fifth movement we did is called the low parallax. Now this movement is a lot like your normal orbiting or parallax movement, but this time we're going to bring our gimbal lower to the ground and add a little foreground to add some more depth to our image. So for this specific move, I'll attach an extra $30 handle onto my gimbal so that I can more easily hold it in the low mode. Just so you know, the Crane 3 already has this handle. And if you have a camera with an articulating screen, this is a great time to use it. Otherwise, you'll probably want to attach an external monitor so that you can see what you're filming. Or you'll just have to guess on your framing like we did for this shot. Now for this specific shot, again, we used the wide 12 millimeter lens so that we could see more of that foreground and to make it easier to keep our subject in the frame. For gimbal settings, we locked in the tilt axis so that only the pan axis was able to move and again, kept our motor strength settings low so that we could get that nice smooth rotation without any sudden jerks. Also be aware that when your camera is lower to the ground, any up and down movement will be a lot more obvious. So make sure to keep your knees bent and use them as shocks to absorb your footsteps. And then just do a 180 around your subject while keeping him in the center of the frame and passing along some foreground to help sell the motion. Moving on now to our sixth move is called the dolly tilt. For this one, we're basically doing either a push in or pull out combined with a tilt near the beginning or end of the shot. For motor settings, you can deactivate the pan axis. That way only the tilt motors are activated so that there's no swaying movements happening in your shot. Now there's a couple different ways that we can think of using this dolly tilt movement. The first way is by starting with the camera high up, pointing down, then tilting it back up towards the horizon while simultaneously pulling out. It's a great way of showing both what your subject is working on and also the environment where he's working in just one shot. The other way you could implement a dolly tilt and the way that we did it in our sequence is by first pushing in while the camera is low to the ground, then tilting up towards your subject once he's close enough. This could be a dramatic way to introduce your character in video. All right, moving on to number seven is called the vertical pivot. Now we actually stole this from the film poets who used it in a wedding video, and he also has a little tutorial explaining how he did it. So we'll link that video below, but basically all you need for this move is a subject, ideally a person, a background, and some mid ground that can slowly come into frame as you do the movement. Now, ideally, you'll want to use a lens with a tighter focal length, somewhere between a 50 millimeter to 100 millimeter. Now, our starting position is going to be the gimbal raised up pretty high with the camera angled downwards at our subject. Then we're going to push forward while simultaneously lowering the gimbal and angling the camera back up so the subject remains in the same position in your frame. Now, this one was probably the hardest shot to pull off and took about 10 tries and still we didn't get it exactly how we want, but you get the idea. It's just going to take some practice. The next movement that we included in our sequence is called FPV. This is where the gimbal moves as if it's an airplane flying around. Most gimbal shots look really robotic because the roll axis usually is turned off, but for this one, you're going to activate 3D Roll 360 or FPV mode in your gimbal settings. Personally, I think this shot looks good when you're flying your camera over a flat object with really shallow depth of field, and you achieve this look by using a lens with a low aperture, in this case, a 1.4. And for our example, we're gonna have our gimbal kind of fly into the scene of this intense basketball game. And the key here is to just make a long, slow, swaying movement so that the camera feels like it's moving freely around in space. All right, moving on to our ninth gimbal movement is the upright barrel roll. Now you've probably guessed it, for this one, we'll be doing a barrel roll with the camera, but we're gonna make sure that our subject stays mostly upright in the frame the entire time. Now for settings, put the gimbal into barrel roll mode with the motor set to a high speed. Obviously to get our subject to stay upright while doing a barrel roll, we'll need him to do a flip of some sort while we capture him from the side profile. Now I'm gonna use a fairly wide focal length at 20 millimeters so we can make sure that we capture our subject's entire body. Now as soon as we figure out what level the rotation of our subject is going to be happening at, we'll make sure the camera is at the same level, then use the joystick to rotate the camera in the same direction. If it can't roll fast enough, then we'll need to either time the rotation differently or increase the speed settings of our gimbal until we get it just right. And our 10th and final unique gimbal movement is called the shallow pole. Now this one isn't a super complicated movement, but it is tough to execute. The movement itself is usually just a push in or a pull out, but with the added element of a focus change where you
you manually set your focus on your subject at a shallow depth of field, like a 2.8 or lower, then taking a few steps back away from your subject so they're out of focus, and then during your shot, moving into your point of focus that you previously set so that they come into focus. The hard part is stopping right on that point where your focus is set, so it might take a few tries. Now this one's pretty different from the rest of the shots because of the other shots, we either had our aperture set high so that everything's in focus, or we used our dual pixel autofocus so that the focus is adjusting to our distance from the subject. But for this one, we turned off the autofocus and just set the focus manually for a specific point and then made sure to hit that point at the pinnacle of our shot. So there you have it guys, those are our top 10 unique gimbal movements. Big thanks to Landon for putting those together for us. Make sure to go give him a follow at Landon BTW to check out more of his work. And if you'd like to learn more about becoming a master at achieving cinematic shots and how to run your own video production company, you can join our online film school at fulltimefilmmaker.com to see over 300 more tutorials just like this or to see a preview of what the course is like. You can sign up for my free one hour filmmaking training by clicking over here. But that's it. Thanks for tuning in. Hopefully this helped you come up with some new creative ideas for how to use your gimbal. Don't forget to subscribe. And if you have any further questions, please let us know.